live. <laughs> okay. Well, it says it. It says we are on my screen now. It says that, but it usually doesn't go live until it usually asks you to. Oh no! I think we are live. <laughs> Wonderful. So, uh, <laughs> so hi everybody. Um, it's uh, great to be here with you. Uh, the Friday before a bank holiday weekend in the UK, which is great. Um, we've got a bit of time to relax, maybe, hopefully. Uh, so I am very happy to be here for our lunchtime learning this week with Mickey Wilson, who is a brand architect. And you can tell how passionate she is because her company, and she calls herself too, a fire starter. So Mickey, hello and welcome. Great to have you here. And um, uh, I'll leave you to introduce yourself because I know you've got some slides to share <laughs> and we're all going to want to hear how to become yeah. super attractive to our ideal clients. Perfect. Hello. Right. Hello, everybody. Um, I will. I do have some slides to share, so I can obviously do that in a, in a second. Um, I always get a bit nervous when we're doing these talk things, so I like to pretend that I'm just um, presenting to my friends, which actually gives you all the right to heckle me because that's exactly what they do. So <laughs> just there we go. Right. I'm just literally going to share my screen now. So hopefully you can see that, Lucy. Uh, yes. Hang on. Sorry, I'm looking at the wrong. Yes, I absolutely <laughs> can. That's lovely. Fire starter. Brilliant. Brilliant. Oh, thank you so much, obviously, Lucy, for asking me to do this talk. So I'm here to um, obviously tell you how to make your business irresistible. And um, we're going to go through some big brand secrets to successfully scaling your business, obviously using the power of brand. So I always start with a bit about me. So everyone knows where I come from and why I'm standing here, talk, not, well, sitting here talking about this. So I've um, been in, in branding and in design for over 25 years. For the majority of that time, I worked with big corporate companies. I was a founding partner of an agency and we did work for obviously the likes of Tesco, you can see here, Samsung, Seema, we did Ocado, we did lots of big company work like that. But um, funnily enough, when we were approached by smaller businesses and really entrepreneurial people in the local area, we used to help them out when we could as well. And that was what I enjoyed most because it was really helping people that were on the same journey as me. So they had their own businesses too, and they were creating something from scratch which I loved doing so much better so I launched Firestarter to really help small businesses and obviously I'd learned a lot in those uh, 20 odd years so I had a lot to bring to the table and I could really help them to grow their businesses through brand so then um, I, we always start with the what is a brand even though obviously it, it seems like a really simple question but actually if you were to ask a hundred different people this question you'd get a hundred different answers and here's just some of the experts um people that obviously have been the, in branding for a long time or some of them are no longer with us um and this is the things that they've said about what what makes a brand and they are all right <laughs> it's just one of those things it's really hard to put your finger on uh the one thing thing that we always say is the brand is not just a logo design so I think most, so many people are really aware of this now whereas back in the day you know obviously start a business the first thing you think is I need a logo and actually you, you kind of need this whole perception so we encourage uh, business owners to really think of their brand as the sum total of everything that everyone sees believes and actually most importantly feels about their company. So it's obviously a lot more than just a logo, that's just a tiny part. Um, so then I'd love to go into what good branding can do for your business. So there's lots of things, but here's 10 really huge benefits. The first thing, and this is actually the thing that I think is most important of all, which is uh, it differentiates you from your competitors. Uh, we always say the single most important job of your brand is to communicate your unique value in the clearest and the most compelling way. So um, I'm going to go a bit more into differenti differentiation later. Uh, but I, I mean, I'm just going to say here, obviously, if you haven't got this, then you're not actually giving people any reason to buy from you. <laughs> um, and you're, you're lost in a sea of competitors. So when you have managed that differentiation and you have this you've identified what your unique value is 
and you're actually demonstrating that then you can charge more so it, it's lovely because you're demonstrating your value you know people are, are more um happy to pay your prices and i think also because you kind of get rid of the competitors they come to you because you're the only one that that does what they want in the way that they they need it um it's really impossible if you're if your brand is weak and or if it's poorly pitched obviously and undifferentiated it's very difficult to convince people that you have this value even if you're amazing at what you do um it's very difficult to do that if your brand isn't isn't saying the same things so the next thing is it uh, good branding you know if you do it right then if it frames you in the best possible way so when you create your brand, if you imagine it as a frame and you want to make sure that everything that you want people to see obviously is on the inside and all the other stuff you really just want to leave out. So uh, this, and it's obviously more than just this cool logo and this website, you've got to think about every touch point. So if you are working with your clients, um, you know, you are your own brand as well. It's, you know, how you appear to them. So it's where, for example, you choose to have a client meeting, um, you know, is it sort of a local greasy spoon that might not set, or it might do depending on what industry you're in, but it might not set the right impression. So if you have an office, and clients come to your office again this is all part of your brand so it's really understanding that they're building this complete picture so you really want to think about this frame on the next couple of slides we've got a couple of examples of, of uh kind of framing <laughs> and uh there is so we have a little bit of fun because it's like the first one is you know who would you rather buy financial advice from so you've got this guy obviously on the left who's actually he's having a lot of fun so you might want to work with him more <laughs> and the guy on the right you might say actually he looks a bit greedy but to be honest you would have more confidence in the guy in the guy on the right so I mean you can put uh, your answers in in the Facebook group it'd be interesting to see what, yeah, what, what you actually would like to <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so but it's, it's a really good example of obviously what you're wearing even uh, you know obviously the paper airplane thing I love but the other guy's got the financial times you know he's clearly kind of in in that business so the next example is a couple of logo designs so obviously we said about this kind of unique value thing and it's this is actually for the same company and this is the very first logo that Firestarter designed so it's for an insurance company called Alpha and um, they were all about no nonsense insurance clarity simplicity and getting a very direct message across so um, to customers and the I'm hoping that you're all going to prefer the logo on the right, which is the one that we design. Um, but you can see that, you know, the old logo, the one on the left, just really didn't say this. That if, if they're all about this clarity and very direct, direct messaging, then that wasn't actually being um, communicated in their logo. The one on the right, we, we designed obviously to be very simple, very clear, very bold. Um, we still have the little icon, but so we're still using an alpha sign and we have this uh, kind of wing of protection or almost like a guardian angel. So we've got that kind of, you know, that's coming through in the brand as well, which, which is, is quite nice. And the last example of this kind of framing you know, your unique value. <laughs> is uh, where would you rather eat pizza tonight? So <laughs> we have this beautiful place, obviously on the left. On the right, you could go to Herpes Pizza. And this is, um, the, well, I don't know if you can actually read this, but it actually says in that green bit, hot and fresh Herpes. <laughs> so they really haven't <laughs> thought about their branding um, or their framing. And yeah, I wonder how many customers they get. So <laughs> it's just- It's bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. Um, so the fourth reason, obviously, um, that you, you really need a good brand behind you is to attract your ideal customers. So we don't want to attract everybody. We want to attract the people that we're going to work really well with, that love what we do, that we just have this synergy. We can charge more, more money We can uh, because they're so happy to pay because they're happy to work with us. So obviously this peacock cook is doing it really well and these these feathers and colors are attracting his ideal mate hopefully uh you think of your brand as the same thing and you almost want to do this in a way that it would be great if it repels everybody else um because then you're not wasting time you know getting rid of people that just aren't right you're not wasting time working on projects that aren't rewarding aren't fulfilling for anybody so your brand can go a really long way to helping you attract these these ideal customers um, the fifth reason is obviously just securing customer loyalty. So 
when you have your customers and they come to you, of that of hopefully these ideal customers or call them VIPs, um, if you're continually delighting them and uh, you know obviously it says here reminding them the reasons they chose to buy from you in the first place then they're more inclined to stay loyal to you and more than that they kind of become advocates as well because you have this strong recognizable brand you're easier um to refer so this uh it's all works really well spreading the love with um customer loyalty then the um the sixth reason is to position you as an expert this quote's really relevant which is trust in brand is one of the top three factors that influence purchasing decisions um if especially this is especially true if you're in a service-based business um uh yeah obviously if you're an accountant or a lawyer or something this is in, this is absolutely um well it's essential uh but i think in anybody we buy from these days we expect them to know what what it is that they're doing and what they're selling so we need the brand to really carry that messaging across this is overlooked so the next reason is to boost pride in your business it's really interesting because when you and if you have a team if you are really proud of your business then you'll perform better you get more customers you sell more you're happier to have you know higher prices and you can actually obviously um win business on those uh, when you believe in your business then so do your customers because it's just it's just natural comes across that you have this belief and your brand is the very first indication of this so um and also when you love your brand then you make sure as many people see it as possible i don't know how many people how many of you have been to networking events for example when somebody will give you a business card and tell you oh it's a bit out of date don't look at it or you go go to our website but it's you know you know bear in mind that we are updating it it's not really saying the right things and you just they're almost telling you not to go because they're so embarrassed and it but when you love your brand and the way that it's, it's obviously positioning you then you you want everyone to go there so you can't wait to give out your cards you can't wait to send out your website address so the next reason um a really good brand or a powerful brand will help you to minimize advertising costs obviously because you have this power of recognition um but the other thing is is because you've pitched it because it's uh, to attract these ideal customers so you know lots about them you know where they hang out you know what messaging works with them all all those kind of things which means you don't have to have this scattergun approach you can have this very laser targeted advertising and marketing campaigns which are bound to be far more successful so it's actually the cost comes down and the likelihood of conversion goes right up the next thing any of you obviously that want to grow is uh attracting the best talent your brand goes so far to getting people the right people on your team uh, obviously, people really want to feel proud. We know this of the company they they work for. Uh, but you, yeah, you, you want to demonstrate you're a great place to work, and these things should come through in your brand as well. And when you have this, then it's proven that that your team have this, you know, lasting, you know, really good morale, um, a good feeling about the company. They feel great. So that is very important. And. The number 10 of our 10 reasons is uh, to increase the value of your business. Uh, even if you don't want to sell your business at this point, at some point you might want to, but all of, for all of those reasons that we've already listed, a really strong, powerful brand will help you to increase the value of your business. Oh, and then finally, this is really important to know. So finally, you have this brand, whether you like it or not. So even if it's something you haven't got around to doing or, you know, or designing or planning, you know, it, people, you're showing up as you are and it might be disjointed. It might be a bit confusing. It might be like that on some platforms and like this in others. Um, and it's just even if you haven't had a chance to work on it, obviously people are viewing that as your brand. So um, it is something that needs to go sort of quite top of the list, I think. So obviously the big question in everyone's mind is how you create, how do you create an irresistible brand? I'm just gonna have a sip of water. That, that okay. is the big question there. And, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. No, I mean, your 10 reasons are great, Mickey. Yes, absolutely true. And I realize that I've, um, you know, learned all that through um, <laughs> through trial and error. Um, oh, definitely. Days, but sort of, I totally identify with you putting them in those 10, um, in those 10 points, very, very yeah. helpful. 
That's really good. And I think there's probably more points as well. But, you know, it, it, tem I think it's the one thing that, ha that has the power to really grow your business because it, it's perception at the end of the day. If you're really great at what you do, but you have this, you know, weak brand that's not communicating that, then your business is not really going to go anywhere. Or you could, it could, the other thing works as well. You could have an amazing brand and actually not be all that great, <laughs> but still yeah, do, be yeah, very, you very. Do you have to have the business to back it up? Yeah, that's very true. <laughs> yeah. This is the thing. So, um, looking at how we create this obviously irresistible brand, I just going back to where branding came from in the first place. Obviously, we know where the term came from, which is to uh, burn your mark in this poor cow or whatever it is <laughs> um, here. But that's where the term came from. Um, the fact is, is that we've actually been branding ourselves and our possessions for all time. And here's just some examples of this. Um, so from all ages obviously even to graffiti which is quite cool so um but actually branding and business didn't come about until the industrial age really and this logo that's going to come up here is the very first logo to be trademarked in the uk so that's the bass beer logo and that was 1876 wow. so before then we didn't really we may have had they usually just had these scripty font things but there weren't, weren't really symbols or logos this is the Bass Beer logo today. And you can see that there's this continuity, which is beautiful to see, obviously with the red triangle, but even the word Bass, you can see how that's developed something that's modern and fresh. Um, the, I love bringing this up, it's just interesting. This is an Edward Manet um, painting from back at that time. And what amazing advertising for Bass Beer, <laughs> because you can clearly see the product in there. Yes, that's um, I've never noticed. I love that painting and I've never noticed it in there never, before, but that's... I know, it's, it's, it is, it's really amazing. So the reason we didn't need branding before then is because we, I suppose we were restricted to buying in our local area for a start and we did business with people. So we would always buy based on who we knew, liked and trusted. If someone in our street was selling something, someone in our family, um, uh, the thing, the really key thing to say is this is exactly how we buy today. It's all based on who we know, like and trust. There are layers and layers of complexity and everything else. But essentially, we need our brands to do this, which is get. A, sorry, my dog wants to go out. <laughs> so I'm just going to quickly let my dog <laughs> out in a few seconds. <laughs> and otherwise, he'll run. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm always having trouble with um with dogs while I'm doing Facebook lives or Zoom calls. Definitely have to Very be funny. let out. <laughs> no problem at all. <laughs> when I work from home, I am not a designer. I'm a dog butler. I just let yes, the dog in and out. That's yes, it. That and the cat. <laughs> <laughs> so um obviously this is the people we always, we will always buy based on these things. And even though obviously there's all this complexity, at the end of the day, this is what we need our brands to do, especially because today so much business is done online and remotely. And in the last year, obviously more than ever before. So it's really important our brand goes as far as it can to getting us that known, liked and trusted factor. Um, because it's usually, um, I don't know how many touch points down the chain before you actually get to meet a real person. So in order to have a brand that does this, it needs to tick four key boxes. And this is where I bring my uh, Firestarter Dare formula into the equation. So um, this is the formula I created when I started Firestarter because it, it was really important to have a model that people would, could really understand and get their heads around. So um, if you look at all brands that are very successful and you know really effective and doing doing well and it doesn't matter where they are in the world it doesn't matter who their customers are or what they're selling they have these these things in common they're highly differentiated they're very authentic and they're really very relevant to their target market and they they are those things all of the time at every single touch point which is kind of some of the stuff that we were saying earlier when we go, if we go a bit more into differentiation now, this quote is really good. So differentiate with value or die with price. Um, and I know we've touched on differentiation, but we'll go a bit deeper now. So 
when you differentiate your, your business, obviously you're eliminating your competition because you can't be compared with them. And it, it might just be only a tiny thing that you do different, but actually that, that is the thing that you, these ideal customers really want and need. So you, it's understanding how you solve people's problems in a way that nobody else does. Um, obviously, we said before, your differentiation gives people this really clear reason to buy from you and it enables you to charge these premium prices if that's what you want to do. Um, but when I look at the how, because this is the bit that most small businesses struggle to do over and above everything else, it's really to understand what their USP is. Uh, and especially if you're in a service based business, it's the hardest thing in the world. And this is probably one of the reasons I set up Firestarter, because I could see how challenging it was for, for small businesses and they really could do with, with some help with it. Um, sometimes you have something that's just radically and wonderfully differentiated and you don't have to worry about this, but otherwise you have to really work out what it is. So I've got some notes here which aren't on the presentation, but I'm just going to quickly flick down and, and look up again. Um, it, it's um, one of the things you can do to find this out if you're unsure is to ask your customers why they choose to work with you. And sometimes this, this brings up things that you would never even be aware of because you're so used to being you and, you know, obviously. Um, but when you actually ask your customers, and it's actually even better if somebody else asks them, we found this, because um, I think if you ask them, you almost get a bit embarrassed because they start to say, oh, well, we love how you do this and we love how you, and, you know, you almost kind of stop them. But if somebody else asks them, then it's it's great. And we do this with clients when they're on branding programs. Uh, we will ring around a series of customers and we'll quiz them and we get gold dust out of this stuff. And when we go back to the business owners, they're so surprised. They're like, oh, I've never realized that it's just something I did. And then it, we start to then build their USP. We, we realize or their unique value proposition. Even we realize that, you know, this is stuff they do. They're so naturally they don't even know the other thing to say is you don't have to be different to the whole world. Uh, obviously, that's probably completely impossible. Even Everyone's unique, but it's completely impossible to actually demonstrate what that is. It's just to those in your immediate catchment area. So, for example, if you if your business is like based, perhaps I've got an example here, actually, uh, you could say you're the, the only whole body coach for busy mums in this town or whatever town it is or something like that. Or, you know, it, it just needs to be with the people that are in your immediate area so that you're those kind of competitors that you bump heads with a lot very often if you own uh run a micro business or sometimes if it's just you then your differentiation usually is just you um it's your personality your particular approach it's the passion and the energy that is you bring to what it is that you do uh and that it's those things that then need to come through in your brand. So it's about bringing that energy and the bit, the personality flourishes, you know, it's just so beautifully designed around you. The other thing you can do is really understand why you do what you do. So this is your passion. Obviously, the reason you chose to do what you do beyond the making money bit, because even, you know, you still chose to make money in that area for a particular reason. And often if you get that bit right then it leads to this dif differentiation because you get to understand how you care about something in a way that nobody else does so then sometimes that can really come through to then understanding how you deliver your product or your service um and you can you can get this differentiation puzzle solved and once you've identified it then what you need to do is really enhance it you should really you know once you know what it is then it should be everywhere so this is a, your unique value thing that comes through so let me go back to this now. So then we go into authenticity. And this is this is actually where you can have some real fun with your brands. Uh, Richard Branson said, too many companies want their brands to reflect some idealized and perfected image of themselves. As a consequence, their brands acquire no texture, no character, and no public trust. So this is awesome because this gives us a chance just to be us. We don't have to be glossy and we don't have to be perfect. In fact, that's the worst thing we can be. We, we just need to be ourselves. And we need to bring this through in the brand. So it kind of links to obviously what we've been saying under differentiation. So 
authenticity, everything that makes you the real deal. This is where we want to know people that want to work with you. They kind of want to know what your agenda is. They obviously they want to know what your you know what what your big aim is, um, values, the things that really light you up, um, beliefs, passion. We've spoken about a bit and personality, but it's I suppose what what is important to say here is that authenticity is the key. Again, it's it's not this perfect glossy thing, something that's just very real and very you. And then you have this confidence and obviously this real credibility and people just feel that they can connect on that deeper level. Um, and beautifully, you have this license to be yourselves. So I always say with Firestarter, our big aim is to help people um, achieve this entrepreneurial freedom. So to have freedom and one of the things to do, you know, that gives us freedom is being able to be ourselves at all time and not trying to put anything on, uh, you know, airs and graces and stuff on. And when you are yourself, obviously, you're really highly attracted to those people that you should be working with. So those ideal customers, if I go down to here. <laughs> so this is all about really taking that deep dive into the wonderful world of you and uh, discovering, obviously, what makes you you. Um, taking the time again, going back to that why to, to understand why it is that you do what you do. Uh, what are the most important and exciting things to you in this? Um, you know, these are the qualities that light you up and then you're kind of identifying your values. And then it's wearing those values on your sleeve and, and attracting people that are probably pretty much like you, but they make the best clients so, <laughs> for you. Um, so yeah, it's, and if, when you start to really think, well, why is it that I do what I do? it's really important that you don't give up because often we have to ask the why questions quite a lot. So you have to kind of say, why is it I do what I do? Oh, well, actually, because I love it. Why do, why do I love it? Um, oh, because, you know, I love being creative. You know, why do I love being creative? <laughs> you know, and it's really keep asking it until you get to the, a really deep level. And sometimes it's quite emotional when you realize it. It was with me anyway, I cried. <laughs> um, so then, I right, let me go back. The other thing is when you're thinking about brand purpose, personality if you're I don't know if you obviously some of you may be working on your own and it's very this is your personality that needs to come through if it if you're working with a team then it still kind of needs to be led by that visionary person in the business I think the person that's kind of my dog's back now and he wants to come in <laughs> <That's> <laughs> okay. to come in I'm so sorry Hi, Two seconds. Hi Mickey don't worry at all go and let him in <laughs> no, come on you're annoying so if you so if you've got any questions for Mickey, do put them in the comments and I will relay them to her. Um, but it's but the, it's all uh, it's all so true. And, and it doesn't really matter whether you're a big business or a small business. You have to have you have to have that sort of um, that alignment and also your own your own story. And this aligns with everything that I I tell everybody about writing books. You need to um, talk to your ideal client specifically when you're writing your book and also um, you have to be completely authentic and you have to have your own story running through the book because I think as 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 Mickey's saying about brand um, you're often you're often aiming your your service or your business or whatever it is at people who are like you or have um, who, who are have experience or are experiencing probably what you experienced some time ago, but you've learned how to deal with the problems that they may have now. And that's the way you, the way you express that is by telling your story. So you tell them what you've learned, what your, what your failures, what your, um, your kind of challenges were and show them how you have learned to uh, create the service that, that, that solves these problems or answer these questions. And, and that's the way I think you, um, you, you develop your brand story. And that story also, your brand is also very similar to what needs to go into your book um, in as much as it is, um, it's, it's the same, it's the same, um, um, you know, it's, it's, it's you that you're selling in many ways. So, um, uh, yeah, it's uh, 
Definitely. And I always say, uh, I wrote a blog actually that was, so it's really getting you out there and wearing your heart on your sleeve. And your story is so like impactful when it comes to getting this stuff across. And when, when you, you know, you tell people why it is you do what you do and the journey you've been on and everything. And this blog I wrote that um, I think I put in there that it's, it's almost like um, skinny dipping at SeaWorld because you have to kind of get it all out there, which, you know, and people, you know, people get to know you as a person. And so, you know, think, and when they understand, understand your journey I think it, they understand there's going to be moments of hardship there that actually make you amazing at what you do and that stuff needs to come out and that what better way that you know to bring that out than in a book I think it's fantastic so right that's uh I think we're done with that one so we're now going to go on to relevance um, Michaela, <laughs> there's a few comments here um so uh Sue Williams says I'm loving this and Michaela says um so very comprehensive and engaging and Michaela also asks have you written a book yet Mickey <laughs> we were talking about <laughs> no, this earlier <laughs> I told Lucy before this that I really want to write a book I can't wait to write a book so I I yeah that would be fantastic that would thank you <laughs> um it kind of is a bit of a no-brainer that we have to be relevant to our customers and you know to and it really obviously attracts people's attention but we don't want to stop just there we we want to do this we want to really resonate as well which obviously is engaging um, winning their hearts effectively so um when we create brands it's very important that we look at the real logical reasons that people need what we do so we're kind of stacking up at the logic in a, in a kind of business case but we need also to really understand what it is that people um why people choose to buy from us on an emotional level and we need to put that in there because people always make these decisions with their hearts and it's called the gut feel and they it's been proven that even if you if the riskiest most expensive purchasing decision um people don't even know they're doing it but they choose based on how they feel then they kind of trick um, themselves into thinking that they've used the logical reasons. Um, and then they, they obviously use those to justify that decision and to themselves and then to everyone else. So it's important, obviously, with branding and with any kind of marketing that we have this real uh, logical understanding, but this, this very sort of emotional pull as well. Um, and then I think the other thing that it's really important to say in terms of this relevance bit is it's it's thinking 360 degrees. It's not just customers, but it's everybody you want to attract. If you're building a business and you just concentrate on getting customers, but you can't get people on your team to help you, then your business isn't going to grow in a very sustainable way. There's other things as well, because uh, uh, you, you may often, if you can identify strategic partners, that can really help you on your journey then you've got it's kind of like a fast track to success really um some of you will need investors um obviously if you're intending to to sell then you'll, you'll be looking for a buyer at some point and it's important to know that your brand needs to appeal on all these different levels so not just um customers it, ne it needs to kind of have this really whole and rounded appeal um and then and then you, you're going to have something that obviously uh, will help you to grow um right let's come down to here so it's sorry um obviously this is where customer profiling is really really important understanding who those ideal customers are understanding what makes them tick um building those detailed avatars and personas um it's it's just really understanding why they make purchasing decisions you know what are they trying to avoid more than anything in the world that you can help them to avoid obviously they're, they're their pain points and what are they trying to achieve more than anything in the world you know what are their greatest desires and things like that and then it's when you know those things that you can really tap in on an emotional level as well you're there to serve and really help your customers and you know i think emotionally this is you know you, you can really show the alignment um and then, so obviously really understanding, doing some really detailed work into personas and things, but then doing the same kind of exercises for people that you need to build the team. So I think we're quite used to hearing that we have to do these customer <laughs> avatar types, but um, when, when you're looking for team members, obviously you've got your brand values by this point, hopefully, but you kind of need a few additional values because it's, it's one thing sort of working with people, but when you're working as a team, other things are going to come come into play that are really important and if you make sure that you have this value connect uh on the steeper levels um then those those they're more likely to stay and it's obviously be the right kind of people 
So it, it's really understanding when you want to be irresistible, it's, it's, you know, it's not just customers, it's, it's everything. And then when you obviously uh, think about strategic partners, just that one exercise in itself, sort of brainstorming the types of businesses and organizations that would make really good partners, um, you know, ask themselves, is your brand the type of brand they'd like to be um, affiliated with, the type of brand that they'd like to promote with their own? Um, and that, that kind of thing obviously is, is obviously could, could help you to grow really quickly. So uh, that is relevant. And I hope you, all of this is making sense. <laughs> making a lot of sense. Yeah, no, it's absolutely brilliant, Mickey. You're packing brilliant. in so much here. It's wonderful. Brilliant. So the very last point, obviously, on, on our formula is expressing this, all of this at every single touch point. Uh, so there's, this is the easy bit in a way, because this is just where we have to be consistent so when we're consistent obviously we're we're trustworthy and professional uh, i think obviously again this demonstrates how serious you are in your business and your promise so you're consistently showing up you're saying the same things people can rely on you you're not kind of switching about and they don't know where they stand they you know they, they're building this trust i, I think um, obviously that it will aid this recognition so this real sort of strong brand recognition um, so it's just even if you're bored so as a business owner, we're, we get bored probably of saying the same things over and over again, of putting out the same kind of uh, advertising, but but it's really working when, when you're bored with it, when, you know, your team are bored with it, uh, you know, that's the point that, you know, it's it's going to be having an effect in the wider world and they don't want you to change. They, they want you, if you have a strategic change in your business, then that's one thing. But if you haven't, then they kind of want this, they want to know that they put you in a box and they, they don't really, they can't imagine why you're jumping out into something else. So they like to feel safe. You're in that box. They, yeah, they're happy with that. So when you do this, it's really good to have a kind of checklist, a really quick checklist, which is basically going to say is whatever it is that we're putting out into the world, whether that's obviously an ad, a Facebook post, a social media post, um, any type of campaign, a brochure, a book, um, we, we just say is this differentiated as in is our unique value really coming through in this um is this authentic is this does this really feel like it's for us do 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 we really shine through in this um and then obviously is this relevant to our, the people that it's designed for and most importantly does it really resonate with them so it's just using that dare formula as a checklist for everything that you're kind of putting out and then and obviously having this consistency so when you have ticked all of those four boxes, so you've got your kind of four cornerstones of a really powerful brand, and then we work backwards. So this is obviously what we can expect. The differentiation thing is the thing that you become known for, because obviously that's your uniqueness. When we're going to skip down to relevance and resonance, because when you do this and you get this, this messaging right, then obviously your ideal customers will like you. Hopefully they'll love you, actually. Um, when you are very authentic and you're just being yourselves, then that, there's that trust factor. And when you actually do those three things and you express that at every single touch point, then this is the thing that gets you remembered. So I think this is just how you build this very powerful brand that makes you irresistible to exactly the right type of people that you need to be irres irresistible to. I won't spend too long on this bit because this is the reasons, a lot of the reasons that we said earlier on, but overall, I think your brand should go a long way to helping you achieve this entrepreneurial freedom, which I think most of us want, which obviously people come Coming to you, so more inbound inquiries. We, we've spent obviously le less on advertising marketing, less competition, increased revenue. All of these things, your brand has a lot of. Uh, you can really help you to, uh, uh, yeah, to achieve. Um, so more application, more pride in your business, a motivated team. <laughs> I love the more joy working with your ideal customers. I think we just got more joy and happiness. Um, the recognition bit is. is great i mean obviously if, if you've got a brand that you know it's it sort of hits the press or, or even just testimonials and things like that and don't forget obviously you have a brand whether you like it or not so i i dare you to fire start your own brands there we go if that my dog is now crying in the other room i don't know why um if anyone wants to obviously connect with me on linkedin so mickey wilson firestarter um, and yeah, we just obviously we do everything to do with brands. So strategy, concepts, messaging, the creative side. We also do uh, ongoing marketing campaigns. We help clients with all the tools they need afterwards as well. And 
final thing is we have a free brand strategy illuminated session that we offer for anybody that wants to have a deeper dive in their own brand so and you can book that on the website which is firestartercreative.co.uk fantastic that's and absolutely that's brilliant mickey yeah thank you so much and we'll put um come back come into the facebook group and, and put the links on this post if you would oh, fantastic. and if anybody's got any anybody's watching this on catch up later and want to ask mickey questions please put them in and um I'm sure Mickey will come back and and answer them. Um, but but that's that's Thank fantastic. You. I know you need to go, Mickey. You've packed in so much. It's absolutely <laughs> absolutely stunning. Thank so thank you very much indeed. Thank and you. um, um okay. we'll talk to you again. Thanks, okay. a million. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you so much, Lucy. Okay. Bye, everybody. Thank you. <laughs> bye, 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 everybody. Bye. bye.